Alright, in this video, I'm going to show you how to block out the modeling process of a assault rifle asset. So first, make sure your software, in this case Maya, is launched and uh, that you have set up a new project. Okay, if you have not set up a new project, just go ahead, go to a uh, project window and create a new project and give it a name. I'm going to call it uh, Weapon Asset and I'm uh, just going to create it on my desktop so if I go to my desktop I should have a weapon asset project created with all the necessary folders and I have already downloaded a bunch of uh, reference images which I'm going to be used to model the weapon okay so this particular weapon is a uh, Singapore manufactured design and manufactured uh, assault rifle that was introduced uh, in 2018 okay so this weapon is known as the uh, STK BMCR or the BR-18 so there's not a lot of images available for this uh, particular weapon but uh, there are a number of images which I found on the internet which is sufficient for me to model it okay so I found that this image here the side view is uh, suitable for modeling okay let's just uh, open it and take a look so there's plenty of detail available here but take note for uh, weapons for assault rifles okay the left and the right side of the weapon is generally very different so if you look at uh, another reference image I have here on the other side you can see that the details are a little bit uh, more different okay there are other buttons and uh, details which is significantly different from the other side Okay, so but first, because we are blocking out the modeling of this weapon, we're going to use this image first. Okay, so let's go into Maya. And since we already set our project to the new project already, okay, first we're going to copy the reference images. And I'm going to place it in the source images folder of my project. Okay, so right now it's over there. Then we want to bring in the image into Maya, right? So first, rather than using the view image plane method, I prefer to use this method where I create image plane and image plane. I assign an image texture onto the image plane and use that as a, as a modeling reference instead. So to create an image plane, holding down the shift key, right mouse click and hold and choose plane. And you should have a plane appearing in the center. Press R to go to scale, grab the center cube, yellow cube, and then scale it up until you fill up the entire grid space. Go over to the channel box editor tab here, click on it, and under the inputs, click on polyplane. Click on the subdivision width, holding down the shift key, and click on subdivision height. Move your cursor over to the viewport, middle mouse click, and drag to the left until you have only subdivision height 1. Select the plane, right mouse click and hold until you see the marking menu and scroll down until you can find this menu item that says assign new material. Release your right mouse button and then locate the surface shader. If you couldn't find a surface shader, you can click on the search box here and type surface shader or type the first three letters. Click on surface shader and now you notice the plane is assigned with a surface shader. Right, now we need to change the properties of the surface shader so that it can pull in the image reference. So right mouse click on it. Again, go to select material attributes this time and you should be able to see the material attributes appearing on the attributes editor here. All right, so the out color checker box button here, click on it and then click on file and click on the image name folder to bring in your image reference. Now, I have a couple of images that I have prepared. Okay, the original image is this image here, all right, which is rectangular in shape. Let's just apply it and see what happens. So when you apply it, you notice that you can't see anything at all. Okay, so go to the viewport, click on the viewport and press your number six number key. 
Okay, so we have an issue here. You notice that the image is completely distorted. All right, so we have to change the aspect ratio of the image so that it matches the square, square dimensions of this image plane because this image plane is actually square in shape. So let's go out, locate the image in the source images folder and we need to change this into an square image. So I'm going to open this okay, with an image editor. Okay, you can use Photoshop. For my case, I'm going to use uh, Affinity Photo. Okay, I'm launching this software the first time in this account, so it might take a while. So anyway, now it's up. Okay, so I'm going to change the canvas so if you're doing this in Photoshop you have to click on image image uh, canvas size and then for me in this case I'm using uh, affinity, affinity photo so I'm going to resize the canvas so you need to make sure that the longest width is duplicated and overwritten on the shortest width so let me just unlock this so that I can change the dimensions to match 3928 and then hit resize Okay, so right now I have an issue here. My weapon is too high. Let me just undo that. I'm going to resize again. Document. Okay, in Photoshop it's image canvas resize. All right, so resize the canvas. I'm going to put it in the center anchor instead. So it's 3928 and then click resize. Right, so in Photoshop we can save as JPEG for Affinity uh, Photo. I'm just going to export gonna export it as a JPEG and um, that's it I'm just gonna export and then I'm gonna give it another name okay I already did one previously but I'm just gonna do this in this image editor and I now I can close this I don't want to save this and now I notice that I have two this one was created previously and this one is the uh, latest one which I've created and if you look closely it states that the dimensions of this image is 3928 by 3928 now it depends on the image that uh, reference that you have downloaded so if your image uh, canvas is not square you need to do this process in order to make sure that the aspect ratio or the scale of your image is correct before you bring it in Otherwise, you experience this problem in Maya. So now let's bring in that new image. So right mouse click on the uh, plane itself, go to material attributes, click on the out color, and then go and bring in the new image. So in this case, I'm going to bring in the square canvas and then open. So now you see the image has been reloaded and you notice the aspect ratio is now in the correct dimensions. So next, we need to align the image or the image plane so that it's in the proper modeling position. So we need to rotate this image. Now, if you look at the axis of this world here, okay, the Y axis in this case is pointing upwards. Okay, The green arrow representing here is pointing upwards and then the uh, blue arrow, which is the Z axis, is pointing this way. And the red arrow is pointing this way for the x-axis you want to make sure that the weapon that you are modeling the reference is pointing down in the z z direction okay so select the image plane press e to rotate okay to snap rotate you hold down to the j key and then grab the manipulator and rotate it until it is 90 degrees okay how do you tell whether is it 90 degrees you look at the lower left hand corner you will see a rotation degree text and you notice that the x-axis is now rotated at 90 degrees and I'm going to release now holding down the J again this time I'm going to grab in the Z X sorry the Y axis okay or rather in this in this case is the 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 blue is representing the Z axis so I'm going to hold down the J and grab the blue line here and then rotate in such a way the Z axis of the plane until it is aligned to the world Okay, so now you can see the weapon is pointing in the correct orientation.
or at least the references. So now I'm going to press W to go to select and move. Sorry, Q is to select, W is to move. Now grab the manipulator to push it up a little bit and then push the x-axis until the plane is out of the grid. Okay, so why is this so important to align your image like this? Because if you were to use the marking menu by pressing down the space bar, left mouse click and then when you use this uh, view selection, quick selection, if you go to the right view, you are looking at the correct orientation. Okay, so please make this, make this a common practice to align your references following the z-axis. So if you're modeling a car or if you're modeling a plane, make sure that the reference you, that you are doing is pointing always pointing down in the z-axis. So now we want to make sure that we don't accidentally select and move this image plane. So we want to go to the channel box and layer editor, select the image plane and go over to your layers okay and click on this button here create a new layer and assign the selected object now with the plane selected click on this last button here double click on the newly created layer to rename it okay i'm going to call this reference by uh, typing at ref hit save and there are three buttons here and i'm going to click on the last button until it becomes r so that this becomes non-selectable it becomes a reference okay so now we can start to do our blocking now if you are modeling something like this uh, asset here you'll notice that this weapon is made up of several parts okay we have the uh, hollow side here hollow red dot side here we have a bunch of uh, picatinny rails okay that is on top of here that one more piece here okay and if you look closely at the detail you have this uh, bayonet adapter here the flash muzzle the foregrip the handle right the uh, the rear receiver the upper receiver and so on okay so you notice that th this rifle is actually made up of multiple parts so when you are blocking your 3d model please consider breaking down breaking them down to its uh, constituent parts and modeling them separately and if you study the parts carefully you notice that they are made up of very simple basic shapes for example the barrel and the foregrip is essentially a cylinder all right the upper receiver we can actually modify it from a box okay the lower and the rear receivers the buttstock all these can be modified from a box and the cylinder itself we can actually extrude it out from a box or rather the handle Okay, let's start by modeling the, maybe the uh, upper receiver here. So we start off by creating a cube. So holding down the shift, right mouse click and choose cube. Okay, so now I have a cube. Now, some of you might prefer using a shading in X-ray so that you can see through and model or do your blocking. But uh, one thing I don't really like about the X-ray is that it also dims down the reference so sometimes I'll prefer to just apply a semi-transparent material. So right mouse click, assign a new material. Okay, and I'm going to give it a blend material. Okay, go to the, uh, the blend tab here and click on the transparency to reduce it. So now, now I can see through it. You might want to add some color. Okay, so that we can see through it a little bit better okay so now we start off with a cube now I can switch off switch on to the right view position the cube right perhaps in the center here okay and then go right ahead in vertex mode right mouse click on the cube go to vertex mode drag a box over the two vertices here and then start to scale your box until it matches the size of the weapon now I recognize that this is Picatinny rail here is a separate item so I'm go just going to create the box until it matches the shape of this uh, upper receiver and then there I see I notice a gap here so I'm going to end the model here. Okay so I'm going to now insert a couple of edge loop because from my image references, okay let me just uh, pull out the image references, I notice that the uh, the weapon Okay, it has a wedge shape to it. 
okay so if you take a look at this image here you notice that there's a, a sort of like triangular uh, wedge, shape, wedge shape to it so if you compile your images uh, as a collage right it might sometimes be easier to access so right now I want to insert one edge to here so the quick way I normally do is I go to edge mode select the vertical edge here holding down to shift right mouse click and then I can straight away access the insert edge loop tool so I'm going to insert one edge loop here okay and if you can you can actually try to split your uh, panels into two views so layouts two panes side by side and then in this panel here I'm going to switch it over to the perspective view I'm going to press number six so that I can see it with the texture okay so now I've got the side view I've got the top view pressing Q right mouse click go to face mode and then I'm going to use scale and then scale on the x-axis to just bring this down so that I have a approximate uh, shape for the upper receiver and if you look closely here there is a taper around here so that means I need to insert another edge loop so go back to edge again, right mouse click, go to edge, select one of the edges, holding down the shift, right mouse click, insert edge loop tool, and click and slide the edge to position. Okay, right mouse click, go to vertex mode, select the vertices. Okay, notice the shape of the cursor, it is still in insert edge loop mode. So press Q to go to select, right mouse click, go to vertex and select uh, these two vertices here. Press W and then bring it down so that we have this tapered look for the weapon. We can do the same for the bottom part here. So the thing here is not for ex uh, absolute accuracy. The thing is we want to create a blocked out object first. So for the upper receiver, okay, we have the basic shape blocked out. So now let's take a look at the foregrip. Right? So to make my uh, wireframe look a little bit more obvious I'm gonna to go to shading and click on wireframe on shaded right so now I want to create the foregrip so to create the foregrip I'm gonna create a low resolution cylinder to do that just hold down the shift right mouse click and then choose cylinder and reduce the number of segments on your cylinder by clicking on the channel box here tap then click on poly cylinder subdivisions I'm just gonna bring it down to 12 Okay, so this is more than sufficient and then I'm going to select the cylinder right mouse click on it and assign the existing blend material which I've created which I've uh, assigned for this uh, upper receiver now in the side view I'm going to move the handle the foregrip until it is right near where the ref the cent uh, center part of the reference okay so I'm going to zoom in and now I want to scale it down in the X and Z axis. So to scale in X and Z axis, first you go to scale, press R, holding down the control, and then you grab the Y axis cube, which is this green cube, holding down the control, and then move it up and down until you scale down to match the di diameter of the foregrip. Right, so I'm going to scale it up so that it matches the height of the foregrip. Okay, so I can also insert the number of uh, edge loops. For example, you can notice there is a slight taper here. So again, go into edge mode, select any of the edges once, holding down to shift right mouse click, insert edge loop two. I'm going to click and select this edge. Press Q, right mouse click, go to vertex mode, select the bottom vertices. Since all of them are now selected, press R, and you can scale them uniformly down to create the taper. All right. So again, switch back to edge mode by right mouse clicking on it, then select one of the edge, shift right mouse click and insert another edge loop tool here. Okay, we want to insert a couple of edge loop and then I'm going to select the top faces here. So right mouse click and select the upper faces here. And then I'm just gonna use my scale tool and then just scale it white like this. Okay, again, we are not looking for accuracy here. We're just going to look for the approximate shape uh, to get the approximate shape of the uh, reference here. So I need another edge loop here. So if you notice that uh, the, the shortcut keys sometimes will appear here. 
So this is the icon on the left in the two panels here is for inserting edge loop. So rather than selecting the edge, then holding down the shift right mouse click to select insert edge loop two, you can find the last use tool here. So I'm going to click on insert edge loop two. Just want to insert one more edge loop here. And while it is still being selected, I'm going to press R and then just scale it out. So it's got this nice rounded look. So our blocked out for grip is done. Okay, so I'm going to create another cylinder. I'm going to go back to object mode and I'm going to hold down the shift, right mouse click, and I'm going to create another cylinder. And same thing for this cylinder, I'm going to go to reduce it down to 12. Okay, and this cylinder, I'm going to use it as my barrel. So again, right mouse click and assign existing material, to blend material. Press E to go to rotate, holding down the J and rotate, snap rotate until it's 90 degrees. And this time, when you scale, you want to hold down the control and grab the Y axis so that it scale down in the non-uniform plane. Okay, so now I'm going to move this barrel until it matches the position of the reference. So again, I'm just going to scale it non-uniformly again until it matches the diameter of the barrel. Okay, so now I'm going to select the vertex. So I'm going to teach you a trick here. If you're in vertex mode and you want to convert the front selected face into uh, selected faces, you can click on this vertex here. Holding down the control key, right mouse click over the selected vertex and then convert the selection into faces. So move it down to faces and notice now the face in front is selected. And we can use our extrude tool, holding down the shift, right mouse click, extrude, then just pull out one small section here and then I'm going to press G G is the repeat last use command and then I'm going to pull out another set of faces okay so now I'm going to select this ring loop of faces so select one face holding down to shift double click okay so you select this room uh, this ring of faces and then I'm going to extrude again so holding down the shift right mouse click extrude the faces and I'm going to pull the faces along the y-axis, no, sorry, the z-axis here, so which is the front, so I can create the muzzle. Okay, so now I have a blocked out muzzle and the rifle barrel. Okay, so it's a good idea to start to name your parts. Okay, and also we want to delete away the history for each of these components. So select the parts. And we're going to delete the history. So edit, delete history. So there is a shortcut key here, Alt Shift D. So you can use Alt Shift D to delete your history. So Alt Shift D, delete the history, Alt Shift D and delete the history. So now I'm going to rename my components. So I'm going to open up the outliner, select the barrel, and then I'm going to call it barrel. And then this portion is the fore grip. So I'm going to double click in outliner and double click to rename it. So double click on this one, I call, call this upper receiver. And this plane is the image reference. Okay. All right, so let's proceed to block out the rest of the components. Now the lower receiver is similar in cross section to the upper receiver. So I'm gonna duplicate this upper receiver Shift D to uh, duplicate it, press W and then move it back. Okay, and then perhaps I want to get rid of the front faces, like the front faces and delete it away. Let me just undo that to show you guys in 3D view. So select this and then delete this. Okay, and we can patch up the hole here. Okay, I'm gonna select select this face here and you can holding down the shift right mouse click and you can say fill hole. So now this is filled up. Alright, so there is a face that is filling up this area. Okay, just to keep the edge loop or the topology inconsistent, I'm gonna use the knife tool. Okay, I'm gonna use a knife tool and then I'm just gonna cut 
it across here and press enter to keep the topology flow consistent so now we have a the back receiver okay i'm going to press q to go back to select i'm going to go to vertex mode select the last group of vertices and then start to move them back until move them back along the z-axis okay move them until it matches the shape of the uh, lower receiver okay now i can select the bottom of this lower receiver the lower face holding down the shift right mouse click extrude face and then pull down one face here okay so now you notice that there is a transition or change in shape of the weapon we can actually uh, insert edge loops to create different sections so that we can pull out uh, this detail here okay so go to edge mode select one of the edges holding down the shift right mouse click insert edge loop 2 gonna insert one edge loop here one edge loop here all right so this allows me to pull out a separate face okay select like this face here and then pull out a small section okay I'm gonna press R to go to scale and then just scale this inwards then press W to move and pull it back until it matches the shape okay and then for this magazine slot here I'm gonna select this face here I'm gonna extrude the face okay and if you can you can also rotate the face okay press E to go to rotate and then rotate it until it matches the shape okay, of your target weapon okay and then as for the the handle here I notice that there is a section here or there's an indent which can possibly model it separately from the rest of the weapon but now we have enough faces to pull out an extended extrusion to fill up this area so let's go to the 3d view I'm gonna select these two faces here and then I'm going to hold down shift right mouse click extrude face click on this global switch so that it you can pull it out in the global direction so right now I'm just going to ignore this detail just going to pull it all, all the way until it matches the uh, the length of the the grip area so I'm going to use the scale to flatten the extrusion okay and then we will figure out a way by inserting more edge loops okay, I'm gonna go to edge loop insert a edge loop okay maybe one edge loop here okay one edge loop here okay now I can't really see the detail here but I roughly I can tell that there is this slot here so I'm gonna go to vertex mode this time and I'm going to grab these vertices and move them up until it matches the height of where I want this to be grab this group of vertices and pull it out forward a little bit more okay I might need to adjust the transparency of my material so I'm gonna right mouse click go to material attributes okay if you cannot find the material attributes due to the uh, edits that you have done to your model just select it again right mouse click on it go to material attributes you should be able to see it so I'm gonna increase the transparency until you can literally see through the uh, weapon and then uh, perhaps reduce the uh, specular yeah because this uh, blind material is sort of a, like a metallic material so now I can reduce the transparency a bit okay so now I can see through this a little bit better and then we can see here is where the indentation is so I'm gonna grab the vertices pull it back okay and then we need a edge loop here so that we can create a indentation over this area so I'm gonna grab this and pull it back so now in order to uh, realize like what is the shape of your weapon you really need to download as many references as possible of course if you have the physical uh, object itself you can study the where the indentations are okay so I'm gonna insert one more edge loop here okay because there's an indent here so switch to vertex mode and then just pull this up so it follows this curve here now again we are blocking this so we are not looking for precision I'm going to insert one edge loop all the way across here okay and then now we're going to delete away this face this group of faces here so go to faces press Q to go to select I'm going to drag a box over the face so in, in 3D view you should see that the faces here are now selected and then I'm just going to uh, delete them 
okay then in perspective view I'm just going to try to patch the hole I'm going to go to material attributes this time reduce the transparency a bit so I can see uh, the faces a little bit better okay now select this opposing edge here okay select the two opposing edge and then we're gonna patch the hole we're gonna use the uh, the bridge tool so shift right mouse click okay we're gonna bridge now if you bridge by default sometimes you might have a lot of sections so uh, you might want to reduce the divisions to zero okay so right now mine has been set to zero so now I'm going to bridge this section and since our last use action is bridge I just need to press G now select this hole I'm gonna patch it up select this two opposing edges press G to bridge and press G to bridge this hole so now we created this gap here okay so now we have created the or blocked out the lower receiver okay next we want to create the handle so for the handle we can simply just use a cube okay so now let me rename this I'm gonna lo uh, call this lower receiver okay and then I'm gonna create a cube I'm just gonna model the uh, the handle here from a cube so let's go ahead and create a cube holding down the shift okay, I'm gonna delete away this one this is not what I want I want to create a cube and again right mouse click on a cube assign existing material to the transparent material that we've created press W move it into position and you can start to extrude out to form the shape of the cube okay so you can go to First, I'm going to go to vertex mode and I'm just going to align uh, the vertex to match the general shape of this area. Right? Go into 3D view or perspective view. Go to select the bottom face. Okay? And then you can start to extrude the faces. Okay? So, I'm going to grab this section here. And if you can, you can actually rotate. Use the control handles to extrude press G again to repeat extrusion and then press G again to extrude to form the shape of the handle I'm gonna to switch to vertex mode in the side view and then carefully move the vertices until it matches the shape okay and then for the rest of the handle I want to extrude another portion here so that I can extrude out to form this section so go to the top face here select the top face shift right mouse click extrude the face bring it up okay and then so select this face here press G extrude pull out one section here select this face press G and then extrude out to form this section okay and you notice that this handle grip has this extrusion here so I'm going to insert one edge loop okay and press Q select the face here and then extrude the face so as I progress along I'm just gonna go faster and faster because I will not be explaining and talking about every single step that I'm doing if you're not sure which button that I press or which keys that I press please refer to these uh, windows here okay so now I have this four grip here and you will notice that I have blocked out my weapon okay granted it's still a far uh, still a long way from being completed okay but at least right now I have something to work on and also okay let me just rename this I'm gonna call this handle so there are little uh, other small parts that I have not modeled yet like the uh, the trigger the trigger guard okay this one can be just extruded from again another cube and you notice that it's just a simple cross section a square cross section which you can easily extrude and for this picatinny rails we can actually model it separately and then just stick it there hollow side we can also model it separately and then stick it there and uh, if you have more images of the weapon in various angles it will be a good idea to study them closer and to model in out the details for example like this uh, bayonet bayonet latch here all right so eventually once you have sufficient detail you can start to model in all these uh, grooves 
all these holes like all these cooling fins and the slots and as for the final details like these text information uh, like the sticker labels and all that these can be created using textures textures okay so this one is the uh, the chin rest okay and then I noticed that there is I think there's a charging handle the charging handle should be on the other side and uh, we haven't modeled the magazine yet so there's another picture of a magazine so again we can use the cube method to model the magazine and then just stick it there so for now I will just stop the video uh, here okay so you can follow this video step by step to model your weapon of choice so in our next uh, video we will add in more details